Synchronous mechanism transmits bits of data continually with no idle time between bits. After transmitting the final bit of one data byte, the sender transmits a bit to the next data byte without start or stop bits. The chief advantage of synchronous mechanism arises because the sender and receiver remain synchronized, which means less synchronization overhead. Synchronization, excuse me, synchronous transmission sends data as one long bit stream or block of data. There are no gaps in transmission. Each bit is sent one after the other. The receiver counts the bits and reconstructs bytes. If it is essential that timing is maintained and there are no start and stop bits and no gaps. Accuracy is dependent on the receiver keeping an accurate count of the bits as they come in. Synchronous transmission is faster than asynchronous because fewer bits have to be transmitted. In other words, only data bits and no extra control bits. For this reason, it is the choice for network communication links. Compare the 8-bit characters sent using an asynchronous system and one sent on a synchronous system. Each character sent using RS-232 requires an extra start bit and stop bit Thus, each 8-bit character needs a minimum of 10 bits, even when no idle time is inserted. Each character on a synchronous system is sent without start or stop bits. What happens when a sender doesn't have, to have data to send? If the underlying synchronous mechanism must send bits continually, what happens if they don't have data to send or it's not ready to send at all times. The answer lies in a technique known as framing. Framing is an interface added to a synchronous mechanism that accepts and delivers a block of bytes known as a frame. To ensure the sender and receiver stay synchronized, a frame starts with a special sequence of bits. Most synchronous systems include an idle sequence or idle bytes that is transmitted when the sender has no data to send. The figure illustrates synchronous transmission. Audio and video require steady flow of data. For instance, a voice transmission must be sent at 64 kbps or else the listener has a poor user experience. KBPS, by the way, stands for kilobytes per second. ISO means equals, such as isometric, meaning equality in measurement, and isotope, having one, two, or more forms of a chemical element having the same number of protons, same atomic weight, but a different number of neutrons. An isochronous, isochronous transmission is designed to provide steady bit flow for multimedia applications. Delivering such data at a steady rate is essential because variations in delay, known as jitter, can disrupt reception. A user could hear pops or clicks in an audio or have the video freeze for a short time period. An isochronous network is designed to accept and send data at a fixed rate, R. Network interface such as is such that data must be handed to the network for transmission at exactly r bits per second. An example of an isochronous mechanism designed to transfer voice operates at a rate of 64,000 bits per second, using our previous example. A sender must generate digitized audio continuously and a receiver must be able to accept and play the stream at the specified rate. For example, Multimedia streams require an isochronous transport mechanism to ensure that the data is delivered as fast as it is displayed and to ensure that the audio is synchronized with the video. Isochronous transfers have no error detection. Any error in electrical transmission is not corrected. Communication channels are classified dependent on the direction the transmission travels. Simplex, 
data is transmitted from the sender to receiver only, such as from the central computer to a dumb terminal. The communication can only take place in one direction and it is not possible for the receiver to send data back. An example of a simplex transmission would be data being sent to an electronic notice board such as those found in train stations and airports. Full duplex allows transmission in two directions simultaneously. Full duplex is analogous to a voice telephone conversation where the participant can speak and they are able to hear background sounds at the other end. A half duplex mechanism involves a shared transmission medium. The shared medium can be used for communication in each direction, but the communication cannot proceed simultaneously. It is similar to using walkie-talkies where only one side can transmit at the same time. An additional mechanism is needed at each end of a half-duplex communication that coordinates transmission to ensure that only one side transmits at a given time, like walkie-talkies and ham radios. The figure illustrates the three duplex communication methods. Terms, Data Communication Equipment, DCE, and Data Terminal Equipment, DTE, were originally created by AT&T to distinguish between the communications equipment owned by the phone company and the terminal equipment owned by a subscriber. The terminology persists. When a business leases a data circuit from a phone company, the phone company installs DCE equipment at the business and the business purchases DTE equipment that attaches to the phone company's equipment. Data communications equipment, DCE, can be classified as equipment that transmits or receives analog or digital signals through a network. DCE works at the physical layer of the TCP IP model, taking data generated by data terminal equipment and converting it into signal that can then be transmitted over a communications link. A common DCE example is a modem which works as a translator of digital and analog signals. DCE may also be responsible for providing timing over a serial link. In a complex network which uses directly connected routers to provide serial links, one serial interface of each connection must be configured with a clock rate to provide synchronization. Other common DCE examples include ISDN adapters, satellites, microwave stations, and network interface cards. DCE is sometimes said to stand for Data Circuit Terminating Equipment. Data Terminal Equipment, DTE, is any equipment that is either a source or destination for digital data. DTE do not generally communicate with each other. To do so, they have to use DCE to carry out the communication. DTE does not need to know how data is sent or received. The communications all those details are left to the DCE. A typical example of a DTE is a computer. Other common DTE examples include printers, file and application servers, and other PCs. From an academic point of view, the concept be behind the DCE DTE distinction is not ownership of the equipment, but the ability to define an arbitrary interface for a user. If the underlying network uses synchronous transmission, the DCE equipment can provide either a synchronous or asynchronous interface to the user's equipment. The figure illustrates the conceptual organization. Several standards exist that specify a possible interface between DCE and DTE. RS-232 standard and RS-449 standard, proposed as a replacement, can be used well as the X-21 standard. X-21 is a state-driven protocol running full duplex at 9,600 9, bits per second. 64 kilobytes per second with subscriber network circuit switching protocol with synchronous ASCII with without off parity to connect and disconnect a subscriber to public switch network. X21 uses 15 pin D sub connectors, full duplex, synchronous transmission, 
between the DCT and the local PSE.